Hello and welcome to another episode of Crossroads Rebuild. My name is Steven. Thank you for joining me. In today's episode, I'll be doing some work on the E90 BMW. After the last video, I asked if anyone had any interest in seeing some of the basic maintenance that goes into this car, and there was definitely some interest. So that's what I'm doing today. Uh, there's more maintenance to do that I'm gonna do in one episode. So today's video is gonna be basic maintenance. I'll show you what I'm gonna get into here in just a minute. If you're new to the channel and you haven't seen this car before, I'll go ahead and link up here somewhere uh, to the videos on the rebuild for this car but for now let me go ahead and show you what we're gonna be working on today alrighty so as far as maintenance goes today we're actually gonna start with the very most basic thing that the car needs which is an oil change I do not know when the last time the oil was changed was obviously it was before I bought the car and I've put about 2,000 miles on it the car actually isn't saying that it needs an oil change yet but it has been a while uh, as far as I can tell so I'm gonna go ahead and do it anyway just to be on the safe side plus the car is gonna be going on a trip here in just a little while so better safe than sorry gonna get the oil change done so we're gonna start with that got brand new high quality liquid uh, liquid molly oil from FCP Euro as well as a new filter and the gaskets that go with that then I also have an air filter a cabin air filter new spark plugs and new coils for the car uh, you might think that might be a little bit of overkill, but the coils are known for going out on these cars periodically. Again, as far as I can tell, the previous owner did pretty good maintenance on this car, but I don't know how old the ones in the car are. So, since we're going on a long trip, better safe than sorry, I'm gonna go ahead and put new ones in. I am gonna hang on to the old ones though, just as spares, just in case. Also got uh, some good high quality NGK uh, spark plugs to put in it as well. Let's go ahead and get started with the oil change. Come along with me as we get into that. All right, let's go ahead and get under the car and I'll show you what we got to work with here. All right, so the oil uh, drain is right here underneath this little access port. This thing covers uh, the access to the oil. It's got this little thing here uh, that's designed to come, uh, come open with a flat head but it looks like this one's been stripped out so it's a little bit hard to use but I guess it's working there we go and then that will flop open you can actually pull that off of there then it should be a 17 millimeter yep it is let's go ahead and move my catch pan underneath it and crack this open mm, that's on there tight Ooh. Clean this one up real well. I'm done. And there we go. Let that drain out. All right, while the oil pan is draining, we're gonna go ahead and work on the filter. Now, if you're used to doing an oil change on an American car or a Japanese car, uh, most of them are just a single unit uh, canister oil filter. It's usually somewhere on the side. Uh, occasionally it's up on top. Um, whole thing comes off and you replace it. It's already got a built-in gasket. Um, BMW and a lot of other German cars are a little bit different. They have um, a, uh, a cartridge type filter. Looks like this. We'll look at that in a second. Uh, it's a paper cartridge filter. Looks like this. So first thing to do is go ahead and get the cap off and hopefully this will come off just hand tight so we don't have to use any tools. But of course that was really tight below, so, oh golly. Well, we'll try the filter wrench and see if that'll work. There it goes. It does not need to be that tight. So when I put it back on, it's gonna go on hand tight. Great day. All right, there we go. So we'll take off the cap here. I'll let that drain in there a little bit. Not to make too much of a mess. Alrighty, so here is the old paper filter. And in addition to that, we've got a couple of gaskets. We've got one here for the housing and then a smaller one that goes here in the center uh, that goes down in the drain uh, and the filter that goes down in the uh, oil pipe there. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and pull this out and then we'll remove these gaskets so we can put the new ones in. 
All right, I have set the filter cartridge aside and I've grabbed a pick here that I'm gonna to try to use to get these old gaskets off. Doesn't really matter if you damage them because we are replacing them. There we go, there's one. I have no idea where that just went. And then this one here, try to get this guy off. There we go. And that's that, I'll just toss that aside, pick that up later. So, little pick tool, very helpful. All right, now that I've got those uh, now that I got this cleaned up a little bit, I've got the old gaskets off. I'm gonna go ahead and get these gaskets out. You wanna be careful if you've got one of these kits that has all your gaskets. Uh, you wanna be careful not to lose this little crush washer because we're gonna need that in a little while uh, to put on the oil drain plug. So do not lose that. I am gonna go ahead and drop mine here in the box. All right. Then I'm gonna start with a little one here. Get just a little bit of this old oil here, just to slick it up, lube it up, and hopefully she'll go on. There we go, just fine, just like that. All right, and now for the bigger one. All right, and again, I'm just gonna use a little bit of this just to lube it up a little bit. And go ahead and wrap it on there. And it goes down here in this lower channel, larger channel. There we go. Make sure that's seated well. And wipe it down one more time. Okay. And now uh, the oil filter, doesn't matter which way this goes in. So that just slides right down on top of this. A little bit of a tight fit. There we go, snaps in and that's ready to reinsert. I'm actually gonna go ahead and wipe out the excess oil in there, um, and then I'll go ahead and insert that. Alrighty, I've got the bulk of the oil up out of there, so go ahead and slide this back in, and get it threaded on. All right, now that I've changed gloves, I should be able to screw that on. And again, there is no need to jam this thing on uh, as tight as it was. You can see it stops. When you can't do it by hand anymore, it's on there just fine. So, there is our oil filter changed. And we should be just about done draining from down below and then we'll be ready to add oil to the car. All right, I believe the car is just about done draining. So before we add the new oil, don't forget to put your drain cap in or your drain plug and before we do that like i said you get a new crush washer in uh in the uh in the kit so go ahead and take off that old crush washer of course mine would fall in there and put the new crush washer on okay we'll wipe this up a little bit just a little drip not gonna be a big deal so we'll go ahead and get that screwed in. All right, no need to go crazy on it. Get it nice and snug. I like to wipe it up a little bit more so we don't like a lot of dirt and grime down here. Make it look nice. Looks pretty good. Let's go ahead and get our panel cover. Slap that on there. And now we'll try to get this back on. I put the new oil in. I'm gonna go ahead and get the car back down on the ground so it's level, and then we'll put the oil in, and then I'll show you how to check the oil level. Alrighty, car is back on the ground and level, so it's time to put the oil in. The oil fill is right here, so we'll turn it. All right, and then it pops open like so. And I've got my funnel. I don't have a really big funnel, but it'll get the job done. Go ahead and add the oil now. All 
All right, I'm in the car now. The car's not on yet. And uh, BMW in the E90 series, this may have started in the E46 series, but at least in the E90 series, uh, they started using an electronic dipstick. Uh, in other words, there is no dipstick under the hood. You can't pull it and check it manually. The only way you can check it is to let the computer do it for you. I don't know why they've got to go and do something like that, but one way or the other, that's what it is. So let me show you how to do that. First thing is you've got to start the car. So foot on the brake, the uh, key is in the, uh, you can't even see it. Key here is in the little slot and we'll go ahead and start the car. All right. So, sorry, I've got that light out. We'll show you that later. So let me show you this over here. We've got uh, this little control right here. And if you press the BC button, that's kind of a, a selector type deal. All right, so the BC button here, uh, when you're just in normal mode, uh, uh, cycles through the different uh, options on your trip computer. So the next thing to do is go ahead and press up or down on the little selector here. So we'll go ahead and scoot through these. And you just wanna keep clicking through until you see oil. And then you see the little, the little arrow there, same arrow that's on the BC button. So we'll select that. And you can see that the car is reading. Now it's been on for a few seconds, so it already had a chance to do its own self check. And you can see it's got uh, a min and a max there. And we are sitting right on the little dash for the max. So I'd say we've got uh, just exactly the right amount of oil in there. So we're not gonna put any more in gonna let it run here for just a little while and then we'll get into the rest of our service all right now we're gonna go ahead and do the air filter the air filter is a fairly simple job um, but a couple things that need to come off first uh, first of all there is a worm gear down here uh, to uh, loosen the air box from uh, the air intake so that'll take a flathead and then we're gonna go ahead and also remove the sensor here uh, that takes a t25 Torx I don't know if you can see that there, T25 Torx. And then we'll also need to loosen up uh, right here and then take off these two 10 millimeter bolts. Once we do all that, the whole thing should just lift right out and then we can open it up to do the actual air filter replacement. All right, just about ready to put this back in. Uh, the last thing I want to point out though is I took this sensor completely out. That is not necessary. It does disconnect down there. So you can take it out if you like, but you don't actually have to take it out. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that back in and then I'm gonna put it back in the car. just turned on the big gun lights and uh, lit this thing up like daylight. The reason I did that is because we're gonna go ahead and get into the ignition coil and spark plug replacement. And while we're at it, we're also going to do the cabin air filter. So we'll go ahead and get started on that now. All right, the first step in this process is actually to remove the uh, cabin air filter housing. Uh, before I do that though, I'm actually gonna get all these leaves cleaned out of there so I don't lose any leaves down inside. So I'll go ahead and get started with that. Then we will remove the cabin air filter cover and then we'll remove these side two panel covers. There is the cabin air filter. We'll come back to that when we're done with all this uh, because I have a replacement filter. All right, next step is to replace or to pull out these little covers here. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and pull this straight out. And looks like we have a broken clip here, very nice. But we still have two good ones, so we should be all right. Now we need to release these three clips right here. All right, very good. All right, now that these are disconnected, the last thing to do is get this cover out of the way. It's held down with uh, two eight millimeter bolts, one on each side, and then a couple of these retainers, these rubber retainers, and that whole thing will just lift right out of there. So let's go ahead and do that now. 
All right, lastly, before we lift this out, now that it's loosened up, uh, we need to take off these two guys. Uh, I think that's the hood closed sensor. Uh, so we'll detach that. I actually don't know what this is. Um, maybe a temperature sensor? Not sure. It's already loose, so I need to look at how that goes back in. Uh, somebody in the comments, if you know what this is, tell me what that is, I'm curious. Uh, but in any case, I do know that it needs to be out of the way, so I'm gonna get these unclipped and get this out of the way. Everything's disconnected, so let's carefully pull it on out of here. Yeah. Everything's sort of kind of unconnected, there we go. And let's dump all this. All right, now that all of that is out of the way, uh, it's time to get the uh, engine cover off. Looks like you need Torx bolts, but in reality, my understanding is this thing actually just lifts right off of there. So we'll go ahead and carefully do that now. All right, now that the engine cover is out of the way, uh, it's time to get to the main event, which is actually pulling out um, our coils and our spark plugs. Uh, the coils should be relatively straightforward to pull out. Um, you lift up on this cover here, and it actually pulls the connector away, uh, and then that should just pop off, and then uh, you should be able to just wiggle it and pull it on out. If it does get stuck on the way, uh, you can take an extension, stick it through here, and pull it out. That one came out really easily, so here's hoping that the other five do as well. Now once I've got this out, this is what I'm replacing, this is the coil. The next thing I need to do is also take out uh, the spark plug down there, uh, my understanding is that the spark plug is actually a 16 millimeter, uh, but 5 8 should do the trick. So I've got a 5 8 spark plug socket here and my long 12 inch extension, and now I'll be able to go ahead and pull those out. <clears throat> not bad, not bad. There's the spark plug. Well, I've seen worse, but they were ready to go. So let me go get my new spark plugs and coils, and we'll start replacing them. All right, here are the old spark plugs compared to the brand new ones. They're both NGKs, so it's the same thing, uh, but these old ones, who knows when the last time they were out. This car had pretty good maintenance, but these spark plugs look like uh, they've been in there for quite a while, 182,000 miles. They may have been replaced once, um, but I'm guessing these are pretty old. So I'm gonna go ahead and start putting these in. They're already pre-gapped, so I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, start installing them into the car. All right, it's a good practice to go ahead and get these started by hand so you don't accidentally cross-thread them. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And it feels like it's in there pretty well. So, this. All right, snug, but not too tight. And let's take a look at one of our new Bosch coils. It's old and new. See, everything is exactly the same. The originals are also Bosch. So let's go ahead and install the new ones. All right, so you insert it until you hear it pop, and that means it's now attached to that spark plug. Go ahead and put our connector on there, push it in as far as you can by hand, and then snap it down. Snapped in nice and tight. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and just do the same thing and go on down the line so that I don't miss any along the way. All right, quick update. I've got the first three done. I have the last three to do. And, uh, well, I've done the easiest three. Hopefully the last three will go as smoothly as the first three did, uh, but they're kind of buried a little bit. So uh, wish me luck. Let's go ahead and get started. All right, just finished up with cylinder number five right here. About to start number six. For these last two, if you're doing this yourself, I recommend finding some sort of a, uh, a wobble socket. Um, 
This one's actually an extension and spark plug socket kind of in one, but it's a wobble. Uh, it's really tight back there and kind of hard to get to that. So uh, having that wobble on there not only helps you reach it, but uh, also hopefully helps you from, uh, prevent you from cross threading. So there's a little tip for you, hope that helps. Let me go ahead and get started on the very last one. Alrighty, all of the spark plugs and coils are done. Everything's been replaced. So all I'm gonna do is go ahead and clean up a little bit of this oil that I spilled earlier when we are doing the oil change. And uh, then it's time to start putting everything back together. Alrighty, cleaned up my oil spill a little bit over there. Also took the time to clean up the, the uh, engine cover a little bit. Didn't have a proper degreaser, but uh, got it a lot better than it was. It's starting to rain, so I'm gonna try to hurry up and get this taken care of. And uh, once this is all buttoned up, just a couple other odds and ends, and uh, then we'll all, we're almost done. All right, wanted to stop right there and mention that I missed a crucial step while I was working on the car, and that step is testing my work after doing the job before reassembly. Um, you're gonna see in just a minute the final reassembly and putting everything together, but after I got the car together and got all my tools packed up, I was getting ready to leave and come home, and when I started the car, it ran horrible. It was shuddering and shaking and carrying on, and then the service engine light came on, and uh, obviously something was horribly wrong. So I went ahead and hooked it up to the code reader, and it said misfire on cylinder six. Well, I wasn't having that problem before the job, so that means that either my spark plug or my coil, and so I got to take the whole thing apart again, take the, the engine cover off and the cowling and the uh, cabin air filter and all that stuff had to come back off uh, so I could get back in there. Obviously, I have to take the coil off to check the plug anyway, and the likelihood of the plug being the problem was pretty slim. Uh, so I went ahead and pulled the coil and put one of my old ones back in, and sure enough, it fixed the problem. The car started running just fine and smoothly again. Just to make sure that was it, I put the old or the new one back in and started it up again. Of course, it started shaking and carrying on. And so I uh, put the old one back in again, everything smoothed back out. I got to reassemble it again. So the moral of the story here is when you're getting new parts and you're doing a job like this, it is possible that even the new parts could be bad. Uh, that's not unheard of. Now, FCP Euro, where I bought all of these parts, um, have a fantastic lifetime guarantee, no questions asked. You fill out a form, send the part back to them, and you'll get a new one back. So uh, I am getting that taken care of, no big deal, uh, but I could have saved myself a lot of time and a lot of effort working in the rain if I had tested the car before I put everything back together. So top tip for you, if you're doing this job or any other job like this where you're replacing major components, go ahead and start the car and test it. Make sure everything's working properly before you finish buttoning everything up. All right, back to the video. Before we put the, um, the cabin air filter back in, we're gonna go ahead and replace it. Here is my new one on top, and here's the old one. There's three clips that hold it in place. Looks like that one's broken off on mine, but I've got these two. So we'll pop that out. This is where I'm gonna call it for the evening. Uh, it is raining, but good. And I did get the oil change, the filter. I've got a camera hollering. I did get the oil change, the air filter, the cabin air filter, the spark plugs, and the coils all replaced. So I got a lot of maintenance done. 
and uh, I feel confident with the car going on a trip now. But this is where I'm going to call it for tonight. So thank you for joining me. For those of you who told me you were interested in a video like this, I hope this has been helpful to you. And uh, for those of you who maybe are watching Crossroads Rebuild for the very first time, thank you for joining me. If you're not already, if you're not already subscribed, why don't you go ahead and do so now, and then click the bell so you can be notified each time I upload a new video. Also make sure to follow me on social media, Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. You can follow me there for updates as I work on my builds. Thank you for watching, and we'll catch you in the next video.